accordingly. So our, our task is to find the absolute refractive index of glass. Okay, a relation for it. But this is an OBJ. How can you give how can you give this question as an OBJ? <laughs> okay. So our, our, our bone of contention now is to find the absolute refractive index. Of the of the glass, so all that we are looking for is mu of glass. Okay, let me check attendance. Hey, Anita, the Roxen. If you are here, yes, yes, yes. Okay, um, um, Deborah, uh, Gloria. Marvelous, Mary, Abivia, Anajua. Ajua, Ajua, Amposa. I saw two Ajua. Okay. Nanefua, hey! Trifina. Okay, Nanejemfua and Nsira, as usual. Okay, so let's continue. Now, Refraction over here, refraction over here, okay? Don't forget, if we manage to find this R, we found this, okay? Because they will alternate. So when we consider deviation at this boundary, we know that the refractive index of A times the sign of this angle, which is 90, must be equal to the refractive index of, this is water, times sign of R by Snell's law. Okay. Please, are we okay? Refractive index of air is constant, one. Air and vacuum is one. And because sine 90 is also one, it means that, and don't forget, we've also been given the refractive, absolute refractive index of water, which is this. So four on three times sine R. Therefore, sine R is equal to, um, one on four and three, which will be three on four. Okay, now when you find, when you find the sine inverse of this, of three and four, then that's you have an approximate value of 49 degrees. Yes. So, so if you ask that question, this is where the value is from. Okay, now let's also look at the deviation which, which occurs here. Okay, if the, if, the, if the refractive index of glass, absolute, is mu g, then we can say that the product of the refractive index of this, today I have a very wide board so I can flex. Okay, so mu of glass, by sine of i must be equal to the refractive index of water by sine of r. Okay, sine of r because this angle would alternate with this angle. So if this is r, this will also be r because it's within the same medium. Now, let them for you okay, are you fine? Yes, please. Yes, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah. So, uh -huh. are you with I? We are uh, we are looking at the earlier. This equation one refers to the deviation 
at the first boundary, air, air water interface. Then we are looking at the deviation between water glass interface. Okay, so in equation one, all equation two, all that I'm saying is that, okay, when I take the refractiveness of this and multiply by the sign of the angle of incidence there, it must be equal to the refractive index of the second medium, which is water, times sine of the angle of refraction there. But because this is from here to this point, it's within the same boundary. If this is R, this will also be R. That's what I said. Are you fine? Yes, please. Good. So let me, let's, we don't know this, and that's what we are looking for. We don't, we don't also know what sign I is. So it is maintained by sign of I, this is equal to the absolute refractiveness of water we have it, four on three times sign of R, we have this value. I don't want to substitute substitute whatever we got for I, even though we can do that, but I will use this. So this is three sine R is three on four. If sine R, R is three on four, then three would deal with this, four would also deal with that. Now look at what I have. All that we have is that mu G by sine I, is equal to one. Therefore, if you make the absolute refractive index of glass, the subject you have one over sine i, and that is the answer. So here, we are only to get a relation or an equation. That's all. Okay. Are we fine? Yes, please. If you are if you are writing, quickly finish it and let's continue with the yes, task please. for today. Hello. Can I clean the board? Mr. Jaya, please can I go um, back to the diagram? Hey, I'm there. Mr. Jaya, please, which question is this? Oh, it's one of the trial, oh, questions, of the trial questions I posted earlier. I posted earlier. Okay. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll forward the question again so those of you couldn't get it. Let me do so right away. Elijah, please, can you capture it? Why? Your, 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 this thing cannot capture. <laughs> I, I, uh, the, the solution is already on the platform. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I've seen it. So. The, and the, the question is there too. Yes, please. Thank you. Okay. All right, so the last time we had a class, we solved that question on um, refraction using the lens or um, uh, lens equation. Okay, which I, I taxed you to use RP, uh, sorry, NC to solve the same question. In fact, NC convention, uh, for, for using the lens equation, the NC conversion doesn't work. So that is why under, under lenses, the only convention we use is the RP. Because NC doesn't work. And it doesn't work because, you see, for, for, for mirrors, for mirrors, when we talk about real images, if images 
uh, uh, an image form is real, then we expect it to be at the same side as the object. So if it's, a, if it's at the same side as the object, then the image is real. If it is at the other side, opposite side of the object, it is virtual. So this is real. This is virtual. For, for lenses, being it concave or convex, Okay, this is convex. When we talk about real images, if the object is here, then the image is at the opposite end. So this image is real. And if the object, don't forget virtual image is always upright. Real images are always inverted. So if this object, this is image. Yeah, this is this is image. Then it means this image is virtual. This image is real. Over here, this is object. This is image. This is also image. Okay. So you realize that the position of the image, image for mirror and lens swaps. And because of the swapping, that is how come NC doesn't support lenses. If it had been maintained as we have in mirrors, if the position of the image is maintained as we have in mirrors, NC would work. But because of the swap, the only convention uh, lenses, okay, support is RP. So that's the reason why we use only the RP convention for lenses. And I think I did that with Marvelous so well. We we shared ideas after the class and then we saw that, yes, that is it. So for lenses, the only convention to use is RP. And RP simply means that real is positive. If it's not real and it's virtual, it is negative. Are we are we okay? Yes. Yes. So do not worry yourself with blah blah blah. Just use RP and go Scott free. Now today let's look at something not which is not so detailed, but then they often would ask one of you questions. If if Hello, lenses... Mr. Adria. Hello, Mr. Nadora. Mr. Adria, please, did you find the eye, the angle of incident? No, we are we are only to find, we were not asked to find the angle of incident. We were to find the, um, oh, okay. the, the absolute refractiveness of glass. So please, that's all. That's all. Okay. Adwa, Adwa Mr. Adia. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. And you, you won't ask. And Mr. You. Adia, please, what about you? Hey, fine, thank you. So what we have, combined lenses that are combined, two. So here we have, we have two. Please, what kind of lens is this? If you have a question, what kind of lens is this? Are uh, these? Dear, if you have a question. Say, dear, it's a convex lens. You see, convex or convex or convergent. Hey. Convergent. Yes, great. So this first one, the focal length of this is F1. Then the focal length of the second one is F2. 
our question is that find the total focal length that combined here we term it, we term it as the combined focal length and then the power find the combined combined focal length I hate my markers. Hey, I want very deep markers. Combined focal length. Now you see the focal length of convex, convex or converging length is real. And so F, F for, for convex length is positive. So it means the combined focal length, which will represent as one on capital F, will be equal to one over the focal length of the first one, plus they are all positive. So because they are all convex, plus one over F2. So assuming F1, has a focal length of 10 centimeter. F2, focal length of five centimeter. Then the combined focal length will be one on F equal to one on 10 plus one on five. This is equal to LCM 10, one plus two. Three on ten. Therefore, F. Therefore, F is equal to ten on three, which is equal to three point three three centimeter. This is a combined focal length. for two convex convex lenses. Now, if we have one convex and then the other one is there. Hello. Please, the focal and is it constant or you were just giving an example with the 10 and the 5? Uh, yes, example. I was just giving an example. Oh, okay. So here we have combined. And look at the combination. Hey, you can see it. Eh? Hey, where is it? Please, can you see? <laughs> please, please, we can see him. Oh, you have to see you. I hope I hope it's better now. Yes, it's better. Yes. Okay. Because I have combined it so well. I'm here drawing, but today we are doing drawing. So F1. This has a focal length of F1, and this has a focal length of F2. But you know, for the focal length for convex, because F, the focal length, fo principal focus is real, F1 is a positive. Then the other one, concave, F2 will be equal to a negative. Therefore, the combined focal length one on F will be equal to one on F1 minus, it's actually plus, but F2 is a negative. So plus minus, so minus one on F2. Therefore, Example, let's use the same example. If F1 is 10, 
So one, okay, this time let's change it. Okay, F1 is five. One on five, and I'm changing because it will, this will, if it's one on 10, it will give us a negative. Minus one on 10. Then LCM, two, uh, 10. This is two minus one, giving us one on F equal to one on 10. F therefore is equal to 10 centimeter. If it's the other way around, if it's the other way around, then, then F will be um, negative 10 in that order. So if we are given a combined focal length, this is how it has to be worked out. You have, you have to take uh, into consideration um, the minus four, minus four concave and then positive for convex. Please, any question? No, please. Then the power of a lens. Let's look at the power of a lens. Power. Please you are writing it. Eh? Oh, no, I was just saying I can't see the power, that's all. Ah, okay. But I hope you can see now. Yes, please. Let me give you some, some information here to put down on power. Give me a few seconds. Mr. Dua. Hello. Please, I can't see the board well. Really? How 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 does it look? Is it blurry or like from the drawing of the concave that side? I can't see it's as if the light intensity. Mm -hmm. now I can okay. So let's get ready. Let's write something on power. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. So by optical power of an instrument, by optical power of an instrument, into bracket, whether it is a lens, mirror, or a refractive surface, by optical power of an instrument, whether it is a lens, mirror, or a refractive surface, close the bracket. We mean the ability of the instrument, we mean the ability of, of the instrument to deviate, to deviate the path of rays the ability of the instrument to deviate the path of rays passing through it. Okay, so by optical power of an instrument, into bracket, whether it is a lens, mirror, or, or a, ref, a refractive surface, we mean the ability of the instrument to deviate the path of rays passing through it. So, what they are saying is that when we talk about the power of an optical instrument, being it a lens or mirror or any um, refracting surface, we talk about it means it's the ability of the instrument to deviate rays passing through it or the part of light passing through it. That is the meaning of the power of an optical instrument, being it a mirror or a lens its ability to deviate the path of rays passing through it. Meaning that if it deviates, if it deviates the path of light or rays passing through it, the more, then it means that optical instrument is powerful. It seems to be powerful. Okay. All right, let's continue with what we are writing. If 
the instrument converges the rays if the instrument converges the rays parallel to the principal axis if it converges the rays parallel to the principal axis its power is said to be positive if it converges the uh, the rays parallel to the principal axis its power is said to be positive and if it diverges the rays it is said to have a negative power and if it diverges the rays it is said to to have a negative power so what they mean is Mr. that yeah. hello this can you repeat it okay so is that if the instrument converges the rays parallel to the principal axis parallel to the principal axis its power is said to be positive and if it diverges the rays and if it diverges the rays it is said to have a negative power okay so if the optical instrument functions by converging rays that are parallel to the principal axis then its power is described to be positive okay what it means is that if we look at convex lens and convex lens and concave mirror These two converges parallel light or rays. They all converge, they all converge rays that are parallel to their principal axis. And so convex lens and concave lens, concave mirror. Okay. The, 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 the power, their power is said to be positive. Why, why do we describe the power to be positive? Because these two can converge parallel rays or light please are we okay yes we the, then concave lens and convex mirror both also diverges so these two diverges rays that are parallel to the principal axis. And because they have the tendency to diverge, they are power is described or is said to be negative. So negative because they diverge parallel rays or light. Positive because they converge. Are we fine? So if the instrument converges the rays parallel to the principal axis, its power is said to be positive. And if it diverges the rays, it is said to have a negative power. Okay. Can we continue if you don't have any question? Sir, please, yes. can you read that again? The concave lens and the convex mirror has a negative power. Uh -huh. see, and the all that we are saying is that for for concave mirror, if you incident parallel light or rays to it, they will converge. All the light will be converged at a common point. Okay. At the principal focus and so because this one converges parallel light then when we look at the other one convex lens convex lens when you incident rays that are parallel to the principal axis after refraction they all converge at a point 
And because these two, okay, functions by converging parallel rays, we describe their power, the power of these two as positive. Are you, are you okay? Yes. Meanwhile, the other one, convex, convex mirror, which curves outwardly, okay? And then, and then concave mirror, Mr. Mirror, concave lens. Okay, so this is convex mirror, whereas this is concave lens. When you incident rays that are parallel to the principal axis, to them, this one, for instance, it will be diverged. This one diverged. This one diverged. Okay. This one too, when you incident these rays that are parallel after refraction, they all be diverged.